Coming up on FRC Recap, Aaron Mitchell is here from Reinvented Magazine. We'll be diving a little bit deeper in that awesome publication that they have there. Uh, First in Oklahoma, Loses a Legend. New products and chairmen will be talking about, and we'll dive deeper into the requirements to restart competitions, maybe this year, maybe later, who knows. Uh, we'll be talking about things that uh, maybe might get you in the good place of FRC, and we'll provide our community spotlight and play Take for Fun Trivial. All this and more coming up on FRC Recap. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome Welcome to the fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Uh, welcome to FRC Recap, where you get the breakdown and discussion on what's going on in the FRC community. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Rolds. Uh, I'm Tegan Poles, co-hosting Fun Today, and I'm delighted to introduce our guest in the middle of your screen, Erin Mitchell. Erin uh, has just celebrated her decade anniversary with First after spending time in FLL, FTC, and FRC as a participant, volunteer, and coach. She attended Iowa State and went to work at Collins Aerospace as a manufacturing engineer after graduation. And when not working with new commercial avionics, she's the CFO of Reinvented Magazine, a 501c3 nonprofit providing a magazine written for women in STEM by women in STEM, sending out over 10,000 magazines to all 50 states in the U.S. and over 18 countries in just one year. Welcome, Erin. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being on tonight. Yeah, can we talk more about Reinvented Magazine? But before we do that, let's get into our headlines. Uh, starting out, unfortunate news to start out the night with uh, from reporting from uh, Tanya Lewis uh, Blancet, who uh, known for a long time ago back in the game announcing, but unfortunate thing to hear about her, uh, seeing that the unfortunate passing of an Oklahoma first legend, Wayne Copeland, has uh, passed away. Uh, lots to say about him, but uh, you can read through the article uh, that goes through on this. And uh, Wayne was one of the few who helped make first happen in Oklahoma. He was a judge at the first championship back in 1999. And uh, a lot of people might have seen actually this video where he's actually buddy with Steve Wozniak and uh, brought him out to talk about first and get him excited and passionate on this. So uh, to quote from the post there, uh, quote, Wayne will be dearly missed, his sense of humor, his high energy for anything new and innovative, his excitement watching young people using their minds in incredible capacities at first events, and his dear love for other people in uncanny ways of remembering the little things about everyone. Uh, so Wayne, thank you uh, for your service. Obviously, those in the Oklahoma area, I'm sure you know who Wayne is. And uh, thank you so much, Wayne, for what you've been able to dedicate uh, towards first. And you know, it's always uh, tragic when we hear the passing of anybody that's uh, you know been in first for a long time or in first at all. So I uh, just want to give a big shout our hearts with those at First Oklahoma and uh, hoping that that they can help celebrate Wayne's life. For sure. And on a little bit of a lighter note, after that. A uh, question I put out to you guys, what can you buy for $100? There's a lot of Chipotle, you can get a Disney Plus subscription to watch the new Hamilton musical, or you can get a Nav X2 microgen set from Kawai Labs. Uh, so the Nav X MXP mounts directly onto your Robo Rio for plug and play work or anywhere on your robot. Using an enclosure has lots of new and exciting features compared to its predecessor. So the yaw drift is now much lower with only about two degrees an hour when still, uh, one when moving. And the startup time reduced only five seconds, so you don't have to wait uh, any longer for that boot up process. And there's a pitch roll accuracy increase uh, on this new model. So as a result of noise reduction due to lower, uh, newer sensor ICs and the 416 hertz Kalman filtering, velocity estimates are now much improved over previous generations. They're available for, as you see on your screen, at $96 from Animark, and they will definitely be an asset to your new robots for the upcoming year. Agreed on that one, and also agreed on that Hamilton subscription, would recommend. Um, Next up, taking a look at the recent Chief Delphi threads comes a fun game that didn't get a whole lot of traction, but we want to help highlight things that get you into the first good place, named after the rad TV show. Basically, the thought process is using FRC as a foundation. What would get you into the good place and the bad place? Some comments posted include good place, zebra striped pants, and bad place, running in the pits. Good place, being polite and saying excuse me when pushing a robot cart. 
Bad place, screaming robot at the top of your lungs. And last up, good place, helping others because you want to and because it helps your team do better. Bad place, only helping others for Chairman's Clout. In the chat, we want to know what your examples are, so post them and we'll play a game later on in the show. Yeah, don't forget, tag ad first updates now with that. We'd love to see you uh, for those in live chat. Uh, maybe things you think about good place and bad place uh, as we go through. So, hey guys, uh, two districts uh, this uh, weekend or this past week had uh, Chairman's Award uh, announcements and Chairman's Award winners for their districts. So uh, let's start out with the uh, Indiana district. So Indiana, New England were the two on there starting out. Uh, we're going to give a big shout out uh, to our friends over at 1741 Red Alert for taking the Chairman's Award in Indiana. Uh, big shout out to, to Renee Becker, uh, Renee Becker Blau, uh, who is the uh, uh, executive director uh, over in Indiana first or president, I forget her title, but uh, did a fantastic presentation to help uh, honor all the teams. There's a lot of great competition uh, for that as well. And congratulations, of course, to 1741 Red Alert for the chairman's win in Indiana. And then in the New England district, that was very dramatic there. Sorry, guys. Uh, in the New England district, the uh, uh, Chairman's Award announced by James Lockman here. It had four fantastic winners as they go through. Uh, so starting out in New England, team number 195, the Cyber Knights, would take home their third district Chairman's Award. Uh, 3654 Tech Tigers would take home their second district championship Chairman's Award. 6328 Mechanical Advantage would take home their first district championship Chairman's Award. And then a uh, big shout out to our friends, of course, at the Neutrons. Uh, 125 for their fourth in a row district championship chairman's award and fifth regional level uh, which would be is what first considers these uh, awards fifth one overall uh big shout out to a special shout out to our fun hosts uh who helped uh who are part of these teams of course christina tia from 125 and uh dave from 6328 for their team's amazing successes great job teams yeah, you guys are doing some awesome work uh, for the New England and the first community in general. Uh, next up, another conversation that popped off on Chief Delphi. A competition is a COVID breeding ground. So what are the new requirements to start competitions going to be? Chief got all over this topic, and there were definitely some spicy takes on this thread. We did come to a consensus on Chief Delphi. Uh, crazy, I know, <laughs> but definitely talking about that it's hard with teams from different locations. 14-day uh, quarantine travel restrictions in place for all. A lot of locations makes it difficult for traveling to events. And some are even saying there should be a vaccine before we even try to start back up. Obvious one, need government approval for in-person competitions, uh, especially indoor. And when we do get together, expect to be wearing your PPE. So if you've got anyone on your team who can sew together some masks that match your team shirt, you got some time on your hands now, you got plenty of time to get started, get to, uh, get to working on those. All right, so uh, with that said, that is gonna be our headlines. So let's head over to Let's Discuss That. And of course, I'm missing my uh, cue here, so here we go. <laughs> Tegan's so excited, Let she became huge on the screen, so. <laughs> well, that's not my fault. <laughs> All right, but speaking of the uh, behind, uh, working on COVID restrictions for first competitions, First HQ has been doing a lot of work tirelessly behind the scenes to come up with a bunch of possible scenarios that we could be in, uh, you know, competition time next year. But it does seem plausible that hotspots in the U.S. won't be out of the woods yet, making there even more uh, variables in play. So some things to discuss. Uh, government approval for competitions, uh, having regulated travel for school boards can make things difficult, especially for out-of-district teams and international teams. Uh, venues that can support space between pits, are they going to be easy to find? Are they going to be hard to find? Uh, are we going to go to no spectators? Everyone going to be wearing their masks? And we also have to be ready to have different scenarios for different locations, because as a reminder, Turkey, Israel, Canada, Australia, Mexico, China, and Taipei all host events. Uh, it's not just a U.S. program, and all of those countries are going to be in different situations uh, next March and April. So uh, that seems like there's at least a few bare minimum talking points uh, for us to be working on. I don't know why I keep going so large on the screen, but uh, Tyler and Aaron, do you have any thoughts on this uh, as we take on this big topic? You super big on the screen is a great look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it'll be interesting just to see even what school districts decide to do. I know the team I work with, Wingspan, down in Melbourne, Florida, is doing a lot with we can't even meet until August. So 
Um, and when we begin to meet, we'll have to have under 10 people in a room. And with a 45 person team, it's going to be tricky just to coordinate meetings, let alone attending competitions. Mm, for sure. I know, especially with competitions, it's hard because, you know, some people are saying, hey, maybe what if what happens if we just, you know, limit the number of people that can come to an event. But at the same time, the competition is the time you get the whole team together towards uh, one goal. So it's tough too to put on that restriction to make sure, you know, can we really cut out the people? Uh, you know, not everyone might be the driver, but there's still a lot of crucial roles at competition. You might even get team culture issues if, you know, some roles are more important than others. Uh, it's a big issue to tackle. So, Tegan, let me let me ask you. So, for somebody who's in Ontario, uh, you know, Canada's having a very different experience to COVID than what the states are on these things, right? Where, you know, if, if you look at, you know, where cases are right now, that sort of thing. And, and without trying to get too political for stuff, I think, uh, you know, as you mentioned, each country is going to be taking probably a very different dynamic uh, for this. And in the states, it might even be per state or region for things, uh, potentially, especially with districts as well, too. So how do you uh, have you heard anything, one from First Canada in regards to how they may be approaching it? Or how do you feel that uh, Canada may be a approach maybe versus how many of us in the states might be looking at it? Well, I think one thing you do have in Ontario, uh, in Canada, is with Ontario, a majority of the teams are in one district, and within that district, you can travel. So once you're in Ontario, obviously you have to be careful, but there's no restrictions moving between cities and counties. You do have to wear masks right now in a lot of cities, but that's up to the city individually. Uh, but in Ontario, just because I know, because I walk outside, uh, what's what's going on? It's definitely different. Uh, but the restrictions are still there. I know first plans uh, for Canada at least to have some sort of event. I know it's talked about FLL Junior or FLL Explorer, as it's called. They're going to be yeah. having events on time, but they'll be virtual. Uh, FLL Challenge, that's your, your normal FLL, might be moving to virtual or at least opt out virtual. So you could have some competitions that where, you know, you can sign up and it's completely virtual. But it might mean we see something kind of like, I believe it's VEX IQ, where it's like autonomous skill. Maybe it's skills. I don't know. I've never done VEX. Um, but skill-based programs where maybe you record your autonomous and they do some aspect of competition that way just so we get another year in because it will be definitely, especially for first financially, it can be really difficult if you have two years of no competitions. Uh, you're going to have a lot of sponsors tight on money as well. But I think the biggest thing is while there might end up being competitions in Ontario with special Ontario restrictions, international travel for us is still a no-go. The U.S.-Canada border is still closed to a non-essential travel which i mean a first event it might be essential emotionally uh, but it's not, not essential yeah, right. at all so um, um and, and you know aaron, it's difficult in that regard aaron i want to bring you in here in a minute um but just something to follow up with in regards to kind of how vex does it um yeah so vex has something called the skills challenge which is done on an individual level uh for things they do that for uh, vrc which is uh kind of their equivalent to, to ftc frc kind of that sort of thing. Um, I will say in FTC, uh, the Maryland Tech Invitational, which is kind of like the IRI of, of FRC for FTC, uh, did something like that, actually, where they actually did a skills-based competition, and that's how they actually did judging uh, for awards uh, for things, is, is that route. So, Aaron, I want to ask you, too, you know, you mentioned, uh, uh, I, I don't recall if this is pretty sure or not, that you moved to Florida recently for things. Obviously, Florida, lots of cases going on, spiking a lot in the South for things. Uh, and like I said, I'm trying to stay out of politics as much as possible, but Florida has said open up the schools and get people in, right? So how could that potentially impact, uh, you know, what you're looking at in regards to, you know, for especially school-based programs? Right, and I think that is really going to be a big challenge. I know the school district I'm in right now, like I said, is completely limiting activities as a whole. Um, and at this point, my school district wouldn't be allowed to travel to competition even if we had sure. one. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see. I do the Maryland Invitational. I actually had a friend judge at that one, and she said it was a really clever way to kind of get some of that judging aspect um, for first tech challenge teams. I know in first robotics competition, it would probably be a little bit different because the awards are so different and, you know, physically robot focused being in there working through the electronics and, um, as well as doing, you know, the software and everything that goes into that. And you really don't get the same experience still with, you know, the basketball sized field in the middle of the stadium. Yeah. Um, so that'll be an interesting challenge to bring in spectators and support venues if that's even in play next year. Yeah, it'll be definitely interesting to see. And, and one thing um, that I, I want to mention as well, too, is that 
I think really where this needs to come from is from first, right? And so if you look at how the whole COVID thing was kind of handled by first, uh, I think initially uh, first didn't have a, a fully good grasp on it. They were letting regionals cancel on their own and making their own decisions based on districts and that sort of thing. And then first came out with that, with the hammer where they said, okay, we're, we're done, right? For the rest of the season, we're not supporting anything like that. In my opinion, first needs to continue with that and make a universal call. Now they can make it per country or something like that. I think there's opportunities for that. But, you know, especially in the states where the majority of teams are uh, in first, I think first needs to be the one who is the strong voice in this and not let individual areas handle it differently. Because I think that just opens up a, a, a can that you just don't want to deal with. Then politics get involved. Then other areas get involved with that. First needs to uh, hopefully continue on, you know, by having that clear uh, clean messaging on what they can do or what they're going to do for the future. And so obviously, you know, I'm sure everybody at first HQ is probably like, well, yeah, we'll find out when stuff happens. Cause we don't know either. No way it's a crystal ball. Right. So hopefully, um, hopefully that messaging does come from first. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if, even if we don't see in-person competitions, uh, something similar to what the Maryland FTC event did with virtual judging. I know first has had to do that because they've done all these chairman's awards now. Yeah. Uh, and we actually found, I mean, our team actually quite liked uh, the Zoom call for, for our chairman's interview just because it gave us time to kind of prepare. We got to have our waffle backgrounds in the back, which the kids thought were really <laughs> cool, too. Uh, but in general, there's a lot of judging that you can do, like Dean's List, Woody Flowers is essay-based. So there are still some awards that can go forward. And maybe that means people are handing in, like, robot pamphlets. Uh, at the very least to, you know, show off their work in some capacity. Uh, of course, it's not the same as an event. Like everyone, you know, if you've been to a first event, you know there's nothing but a first event that can kind of fill that, like, little piece in your heart. But at the same time, something is better than nothing, and it gives people something to work towards, especially if you didn't get to compete with your 2020 robot. Uh, you can at least put it to some use by, you know, taking the photos, doing all that stuff, because there are, for an actual event, you need inspectors, you need, like, Refs, I guess, can you can do virtually, but a lot of the volunteers do have to be in person. And if you're trying to eliminate that, at least the judges would be a good place to start to make it a little bit safer. It'll be interesting kind of on that volunteer note just to see how many volunteers organically join first this year. I know I have a lot of people I've brought into volunteering because... You know, it's a, hey, come see this cool robot event. But if it's all virtual, it'll it'll be interesting to see if that spark and that interest is still there. Just, you know, coworkers, friends, family coming to an event to see what's going on. Yeah, no so, doubt for sure. So, for sure. And speaking of, you know, preparing for next year, and we can jump into our next segment at the same time. Something that gets you into the bad place. Not taking proper precautions when being around people at a first event in 2021. We'll get you into the bad place. So, <laughs> Tyler, do you want to introduce our next segment you for know, us? I'm just waiting for a Frank blog that is exactly like that, right? Where it's just like, uh, you, you know, Frank just writes this whole thing, like, you know, think, things that gets you into Frank's good place and, and the Frank's bad place and that sort of thing. So, yeah, so, chat, we're going to play a little bit of game uh, here. We'd love to see your input on that, but we've asked uh, all of us to come up with a, a couple options, maybe a couple improv options, too, uh, and things that might get us into the first good place uh, or the bad place. So uh, the good place, bad place thing, I think is reference off the good place, which, which was a, in my opinion, a fantastic show uh, that just wrapped up uh, recently, but it could be really for anything. Uh, so if you didn't see, uh, once again, the uh, CD thread on that, a uh, good example would be uh, good places wearing zebra striped pants, in some people's opinion. Uh, <laughs> the bad place might be running in the pit. So uh, here's a couple that I came up with, chat, and once again, chat, love to hear you, and then we'll uh, kind of uh, see if Aaron and Tegan have any as well. Uh, so something that might get you in the good place, uh, bringing your whole family uh, to robot events. Did I, did I write these or somebody else? I stuck those in there so I wouldn't forget them. <laughs> oh, you know what? I put mine somewhere else. I'm sorry. So I just took yours. So Aaron, well, do you want to grab that one? <laughs> I'll go first, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and I have to say zebra pants, definitely a good place choice. All right. I'm just going to throw that in there. <laughs> um, so good place, bringing your whole family to robot events. Get those children started young. Bad place, having them running around screaming in the pits. That's no fun for anybody, and they're probably going to get run over. Um, second one, good place, really cool chairman's props, really big chairman's props. Um, bad place, sweaty team costumes, <laughs> and no deodorant. Those are bad Ooh, things. <laughs> that is so bad. Um, I mean, 
Please, please bring de- We have deodorant in our pit, and it's the wor- like it's good because yes, you have like we have spray on axe in the pit, but we left it in the toolbox one time, and it was like a wind up bed, and someone like wound down the bed, and it closed on the axe, so our whole pit smelled like axe for like three days. So please be careful. I mean, axe be axe is pretty low on, on where the smelling totem pole is, or yeah, smelling pole is, but come on, sorry, Tyler. Uh, but you need to blow the axe sometimes. But, but you know, yeah, bo, yeah, so. All right, uh, I got a couple for you, um, and, and actually this uh, will go off of Connor uh, that he just posted as well, too. Uh, good place, constructively posting on City or Discord. Uh, bad place, pardon language, shit posting or just posting memes uh, would be that way. And that goes into Connor says, uh, bad place, getting ba- getting suspended on CD. That sounds like a personal thing, Connor. Did that happen to you recently? Oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, good place, uh, <laughs> looking up to 254 and other elite teams to see how you can improve your team. And a bad place would be is calling these teams mentor built and blaming them for why your team struggles. Uh, then I'll give one last one uh, for me. Uh, good place having the crowd of Tron at championships, but not at regionals and districts because it gets played out there. Sorry, it's a little underhanded. Uh, bad place first parody songs. So, personal opinion. Agreed on that <laughs> one. Uh, I would say good place is constructively asking teams, you know, deciding strategies, working together as a group. Uh, being in the bad place would be, you know, saying, oh, I'm the Alliance captain. I can do whatever I want. That one's no fun for anyone involved. And if you have to pull the fact that you're the Alliance captain card, you got to figure out some better tactics. Um, another thing, uh, bad place. I can't think of the good place equivalent for it. The right. bad place is trolling people uh, when pit scouting. That one is when you go up to a new, uh, I guess the good place would be like asking people productive questions about their robot and how, you know, how they did their things. Oh. Uh, but bad place trolling people in pit scouting. I was going to say quantitative scouting could be good. <laughs> quantitative scouting can be good. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's that's good. There you go. But bad place is definitely trolling. Um, Maybe a good place on that one is helping the rookie team that shows up with a drive base and yes. nothing else. There you go. <laughs> good team. Helping people Aaron with the win. Section. That's a good one. Aaron comes in clutch. <laughs> uh, one from chat NLSGRN says good place helping alliance partner cheesecake uh, helping helping alliance partner uh, helping alliance partner cheesecake bad place taking it back afterwards uh, that's a little personal to me because there was a year where we cheesecake we helped the, we gave a team a cheesecake in 2013 to like block the frisbees but then we needed it back for playoffs because they weren't part of our alliance and I felt so bad about that please tell call. me it was two sticks and a t-shirt Please tell me that's what the cheesecake was. Uh, I don't that think was a, that I, was a hot take. I think it was just like a polycarb thing, thing, but ah. yeah, that that definitely would have been uh, just two pool noodles and a t-shirt. Yeah, perfect. That's, yep. Okay, I don't know if it counts as cheesecake, but I'm still in awe of the robot in 2014. I think it was 687 out uh, in California that had like the lawn chair on their drive base. They showed up to comp with just like of drive base and they put on a lawn chair for passing an aerial assist. That's one of my probably favorite robots of all time. The they did that at their first event and it was actually super good. Oh yeah. Here, check. Chair. I'll put it up on screen. Check this out. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look I at that. that. <laughs> I hate that robot. And it could, it could, it could pass. It could inbound. It could do everything. It was the perfect robot. That is fantastic. So. All right. That's good. They made it to champs that year too. Just saying. Very nice. Awesome. That's going to wrap it up uh, for our Let's Talk About the Discussions. This is a blank space. Oh, perfect. I had, I scrolled over on my show doc. Now I know what I'm talking about here. Now I'm going to introduce <laughs> what we Aaron and the, Shh. I'm going to introduce Aaron and the Reinvented Magazine. So uh, if you guys haven't heard about it, Aaron, as we mentioned, CFO of the nonprofit Reinvented Magazine. Super awesome content written for Women in STEM by written in uh, by women in STEM. Uh, I'm gonna let Erin kind of take this one away. She'll obviously know much more about it uh, than myself. But look at that cover. It's the start of something great. The I am a huge fan of the magazine, uh, and I bet after this show, you guys will be uh, as well. So, Erin, please tell us more. How'd you get involved in this? How'd it start? Tell us everything. Well, thank you so much for that introduction. I appreciate that. And again, I really appreciate being here today just to chat a little bit more. Um, So Reinvented really got started uh, like two or three years ago. There's an organization called the National Center for Women and Information Technology, um, and they have a Facebook group. 
And Kaylee Looney, who's um, actually the picture on the, if you go back one page, Tyler, she's the top right-hand picture, and that's her dog, Charlie, who's adorable. Um, she posted in there, hey, you know, I'm reading Seventeen Magazine, I'm reading Cosmopolitan, but I'm also an engineer. I want to know, you know, what's the latest tech news? Who are the up-and-coming female role models? Who are people that I can highlight and that I can promote? How can I get more involved in STEM events that are happening? And so she posted in there and said, hey, if I started something like this, a blog, would, would people do it? And the community responded with a resounding yes. And so that's kind of where this whole 64 page full color magazine got kicked off. Um, I got brought in a couple months after that. We've been a nonprofit for one whole year as of May. So that's super exciting. Um, but we um, really got started to provide role models and science and tech news to women and girls who are trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. And that's everything from, um, from everyday change makers who are current women doing really cool stuff. Tyler, if you go to page, I think it's 28 and 29. I wrote sure. it down here somewhere. Um, she's actually a gal I interviewed. Um, oh, back one more. Sorry. Yep. Wrong page. Yep. Um, so she is a gal I interviewed. Her name's Christy Thompson, and she is a process engineer at General Mills by day, but she helps run a nonprofit with elephants and is a semi pro boxer by night. And so wow. being able, right? <laughs> like goals right there. Um, but being able to highlight women who are five to 10 years in their career. So girls who are in college, girls who are just starting out their career can have people and say, you know, in five to 10 years, I could be that person because there's really no clear path from college student to astronaut or um, high school freshman to like CEO of a tech company. But there is a clear path from college student to senior software engineer at Amazon. And so by highlighting women like this who do really cool stuff and highlighting the fact that they're well-rounded individuals and STEM doesn't just have to be their life, we're providing role models for girls who probably don't have any right now. Um, so that's a big piece of the magazine. There's also um, an opportunities board. So Tyler, that's page 55 and 56, I think. Um, oh, maybe not. Oh, well, we'll talk about this one. So this is our DIY. Every magazine has a DIY in it. So, and it's a really simple. This one is a circuit greeting card. So it's sticking an LED and a greeting card with some copper tape and creating a circuit. And so talking through just the science and the circuitry that goes into some basic electronics, like you can see series versus parallel, um, and then designing and building something out of it. So maybe you don't have access to first quite yet in your community. And maybe you don't have access to other robotics programs or engineering in your classes, but you can learn a little bit of technology through you know, this print magazine, as well as seeing what other cool stuff is going on in the world. Um, so there's also an opportunities board, which is some um, virtual and hackathons and conferences that are happening all across the country um, to be able to just get, get more involved in STEM. So that's kind of what's in the magazine. It's been really cool in actually just under a year, we've been able to distribute 10,000 copies of the magazine as well as donate like 3,500. So um, that's through our one for one program where girls who maybe don't have access to internet or access to um, you know, computer labs in their schools or anything, even now with COVID happening, um, they still are able to get a print copy of something where, you know, if someone said, go take a look at this article I found on Facebook, they're like, that, that doesn't help me any. I don't have internet, but they have, Aaron, a, when you say print yeah. copy, um, do you mean, is it actually, is there actually print available or is when you say print, does yeah. it also mean through PDF? Whoop. So both here's a print copy of issue sure. one. It's 64 pages, full color. There's also a digital option, which is what you were just flipping through. So both are true. This is our issue one. Um, I have all of them. I've been like trying to frame them and put them up on my wall because I'm a nerd. Um, As you should though. <laughs> right. So again, donating copies. So if you don't have internet, here's a paper copy for you. Um, if you do have internet and you prefer a digital issue, you can also get a hold of that too. 
So, yeah, that's kind of the magazine. Um, there's a couple ways that, you know, if you're looking at this and you're like, that's really cool, how can I help? Um, there's several ways you can get involved. One of the programs we actually just launched is called Steam Dreamers. Um, and so this is a panel we're putting together of five to six women every month um, to talk about what they're doing in their professional careers, what they're doing to help the community and how they got to where they are today. So just more access to potential role models in STEM. So that one's coming up on July 31st, and that's kind of an end of the month um, thing every month. Um, and that's so that got started because there's actually a study that recently came out um, by an organization called Discovery, and they found that there are seven main reasons why women stay in STEM, not why they leave STEM. They flipped the question and asked why they stay in it. Um, and it, two of the reasons that really stuck out to me were women feel like they belong there and women have people that they can look up to. Um, and so that's really what we're trying to do with not only the magazine, but with our kind of extracurricular activities like Steam Dreamers um, and like the award ceremony that you've got up on the screen right now, Tyler, um, highlighting women who are doing really cool stuff in the community and serving the community and helping advance STEM um, across all disciplines and all people too. So Aaron, let me, let me pose it to you. Um, what keeps you in the STEM community and what keeps you going? What motivates you uh, as a woman in STEM to uh, maybe encourage other uh, women who uh, either are in it and need that encouragement or, or want to get more into it? Mm -hmm. So I, I really think a big part of it is having a support network. So reinvented as a team is 70 members. We're all volunteers and we span from freshmen in high school to you know, mid-career path. So it's really great to be, to be able to just have that community to bring problems to and bring concerns to. Um, I also have a really, really strong community at work and in my friend group that if I ever have any issues, I can just talk to them. Um, I also feel like a lot of the organizations I've put myself in help all people advance, not just, you know, being able to help just yourself advance in your career, help yourself advance, but it's bringing up everybody else around you. And so I think that's a big reason why I feel so successful and why I try to help other people be successful is because, you know, you bring everyone around you, your quality of work everywhere goes up. What have you seen from, uh, you know, some, from some of your readers, what kind of feedback do you get in regards to, you know, hey, you know, these are the types of articles I love reading or this really helped. How, what kind of makes you determine on the next uh, ep or next issue that you uh, uh, circulate in regards to how that uh, subject matter comes in? Yeah, so I actually have two super cute stories. Um, one of them is we got an email maybe two months ago from um, a mom whose eight-year-old has been reading Reinvented Magazine like under the covers. And this really resonated with me because I was the child who you know, didn't go to bed when my parents turned out the lights. I pulled out my flashlight and read under the covers every night. And so that's what she's been doing, but with Reinvented Magazine. And so she can see those women who are doing really cool stuff to be able to say, I could be that person. Um, and I know when I was growing up, I didn't have that role model. So I think that was just a really sweet story that resonated with me. Um, the other piece of it is, you know, how we're choosing articles for our next issue. So we're still kind of growing into that. Like I said, we are just a year old. We've released four issues. Um, issue five is gonna be centered around makers. So it's maker fairs, hackathons, people who make things. Um, the organization that did our DIY article for issue two um, with a gr circuit greeting card is actually gonna be a feature in issue five. Um, she actually just built her own canoe from the ground up. So just being able to make things um, and highlight people who are making things and inventing things is a big feature in issue five. And we're kind of planning to theme that forwards, um, being able to grow and kind of feature people who are doing really cool things. You know, look, Andy, you mentioned that you have uh, anybody from uh, freshman in high school up to mid-career for that, right? So how can somebody uh, get involved uh, on this if they say, hey, you know, I'd love to be able to contribute uh, or be part of this, or I, I just want to learn more, that sort of thing? Yeah, so 
Two big ways. So first one, visit our website at www.reinventedmagazine.com. Um, and that's kind of your, your site to get into everything. So first way I'd say get involved is um, write a guest article. If you've got a hot topic that you want to write about, we've had everything from um, a new way to seal wounds with shark fins to we had another DIY on um, making slime. So any topic that you're like, I am passionate and I want to write an article about this, apply to be a guest writer. Um, and Tyler's sharing that screen right now. So second way would be, um, let's see, would be to, you can get a free copy of issue one and issue two if you want to learn more. Um, we know with COVID going around, nobody has access to a library, nobody has access to you know, a school right now. So we are giving away free copies of issue one and issue two. Um, all you have to do is fill out this form and we'll be able to shoot you an email with links to those two. And so um, we understand that it's a really, really hard time for everybody getting access to reading material. Um, and so that's what we're trying to highlight and still being able to provide information to everybody stuck at home. What does the future of Reinvented Magazine look like to you? So, you know, you're looking at, you know, you, you got a year under under uh, as, as an organization. I mean, what does this look like to you in a year from now or five years from now? So I think a really big piece that's, that's core to the organization is giving back. Um, and so we do that right now through our one-for-one -one program, being able to donate one magazine for every copy that we sell, um, growing that in the future so – one of our kind of next big steps is trying to see and hit that 10,000 number for every magazine. So being able to donate 10,000 magazines for every copy um, or for every issue is kind of stretch goal number one. Um, stretch goal number two is for every issue that goes out for all of the magazines we donate, also being able to provide the materials for the DIY article. So if you are wanting to create a circuit card, but you're not able to um, get an access to an LED or get access to a battery, we'd be able to send those to you directly so you can still get that hands-on experience. Um, a little bit longer term, our goal is to increase first to issues every other month. And then kind of our five-year plan is be sending out an issue every month. Um, being able to reach that broader, larger audience more frequently. Um, and then our another goal we have is to kind of start hosting larger events. So we just got done running a virtual 5K, which was a really cool experience. Um, what does that mean? Me, yeah, so um, <laughs> it was a neat fundraiser. So there's a couple of us on the team who are runners when we're not, you know, magazine editing or being engineers. And so we decided, you know, let's organize a 5K. And so originally it was supposed to be April 25th of 2020 down here mm. in Melbourne, Florida, and then COVID happened. And so we couldn't have it in person, but we already ordered the medals. Um, and so we decided, well, we'll just go virtual. Um, and so we had about 150 people from all over the country run a 5K with us on Saturday the 20th um, and send in pictures and send in posts. So that was a fun time. Um, we also, right before COVID hit, held a Lego minifigure build-a-thon um, where people from all over the Melbourne community put together 5,000 Lego minifigures in six hours um, and came up with awards for people who could display them the most creatively. So hosting more events like that, providing that hands-on access is a big, big goal of ours to continue expanding upon. Um, last thing I want to wrap up with uh, on here is uh, I noticed you, you have a pretty cool shop page with, uh, I love these stickers uh, and yeah. the sticker packs that you have on here. Can you talk a little bit more uh, about these and maybe some of the other things uh, that somebody could get uh, from your shop or get more involved in regards to Reinvented? Absolutely. So these are actually pretty cool. We also just released a BuzzFeed quiz with um, what type of STEM person are you? And you can walk through the quiz and pick your favorites and it'll give you which sticker you most relate to. So that's kind of where this one got started. Um, the sticker pack got started and yeah, I also think they're awesome. They're all over my water bottle right now. <laughs> um, it's, it's cute. Um, other things that are going on, we actually just launched pre-sales for issue five. Like I said, that's our maker specific issue. So you can get a hold of that. The cover will be released here, I think the end of July. That's our goal. Um, 
And then you can see all of our prior issues are up for sale. Um, you can also, if you want to run a virtual 5K still, um, you can pick up some swag from the 5K medals and a t-shirt and bath bombs actually. And then you can also grab some other merch, stickers, um, also on my water bottle, pins, and then we have a super rad tote bag that's got Grace Hopper on the front of it that I think might be my favorite. These are very, very cool. So yeah, so go check it out, uh, reinventedmagazine.com. If you are want to get uh, more about this, please go check it out. Uh, Great reads uh, throughout here. I love that it's it's so community-based, coming together to really uh, serve as a great purpose. And and for those in first, you know exactly what that's like and what that means, right? Uh, So it's uh, it's so cool to see that. So Aaron, thank you so much for uh, talking to us more about uh, Reinvented Magazine. just can't wait to see more issues and especially the next issue uh, issue five coming out uh, very shortly here. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. Uh, So we're going to wrap up uh, this evening with our uh, spotlight, uh, our community spotlight. We have our community spotlight comes from our friends at citrus circuits. So citrus circuits uh, have been, you know, lots of teams have been doing really cool stuff to help support uh, anything from black lives matter, LGBTQ plus uh, and different organizations in need and citrus circuits. Definitely. Uh, a big uh, part of that. Uh, So a quote from them, they said on Citrus Circuits, we recognize that discrimination is a prevailing issue today and we condemn all forms of it. To support the LGBTQ plus community and the Black Lives Matter movement, we designed a limited edition apparel and stickers available on Teespring. 100% of the proceeds from all these products will be donated to Sacramento LGBT Community Center and the Sacramento chapter of NAACP. So uh, Citrus Circuits, always a fantastic team out there in California. Uh, Big fans uh, here on fun and we're big fans of them so citrus circus thank you so much uh, for doing an awesome job uh, and getting things out there to help out those who are in need all right so with that said we're going to wrap up our show for this evening uh aaron thank you so much once again once again from reinvented uh magazine uh anything you kind of want to wrap us up with uh, or anything maybe i don't know secret thing at collins aerospace you want to tell us about Secret things at Collins Aerospace? Yeah. Oof. Well, if you Google synthetic vision system on YouTube um, or combined graphic system, that's the program I'm working on right now. There's a neat, I think it's three minute video on YouTube about what it's supposed to look like. Um, it's a really cool thing. Basically, when pilots are trying to land safely um, and it's storming or it's dark out. Oh, I don't know if it's the first one on there. Um, I won't put it up just in case it's competitive. Okay. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but yeah, combined vision system or something like that on YouTube. It's a three-minute video about combining um, what visible pilots can see, what a video stuck in the uh, Collins Aerospace combined vision system, fifth one down. Um, Thank you. About combining what pilots can see, what a video camera can see, as well as you know infrared sensors and other things stuck all over the plane can see. Um, to help a pilot land safely and securely. So it not only gives you video, you know, so if it's stormy, a video is not going to help you, but it also gives you the topography so you don't fly into a mountain. Um, It also gives you, you know, where the airport is in, like, bright colors so you know what you're aiming for when you're trying to land. So My my DJI drone is coming in tomorrow, so this is exactly what I envision it's going to be like flying this. Perfect. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Tegan, thank you so much for going on as a co-host. What's going on in your world, in your world right now? Oh, you're muted, unfortunately. You know what that means. Muted in chat. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can get Tegan back on a second here. The, the uh, ever amazing program we use Skype sometimes has issues out there. Uh, I do want to give some big thank yous once again. Uh, of course, everybody helps support the stream. Had some great subs come in. Hey, it's Leo. I, I saw giving out some uh, uh, tiered subs out there. Red Leader 342 giving out five subs uh, as well, too. And uh, hey, it's Leo. Just they do that ca- competition race. Not that I'm complaining. We'll take the subs. Thank you so much, guys, uh, for your support uh, through that. And anybody else uh, who helps sub today, uh, Howard, uh, uh, hey, it's Leo, of course, again, Electric Reflex. Uh, first coach, uh, it's, uh, John stay who lay one, three, one, two, three, four, sup, Chris and others who help support the stream. Thank you so much. Uh, helping us stay live, live independent and bringing on fantastic, uh, guests like Aaron here as well. Taking, are you back with us? 
Tegan says that she can't no. wait to talk to you more about what's going on in the XRC program. Uh, and of course, uh, with Waffles, uh, trying to get things going during the quarantine time. So thank you so much uh, for that as well. Uh, hey, don't forget, make sure you follow us here on uh, Fun through our Discord, discord.gg forward slash first updates. Now you can also do so uh, through any of our socials under first updates now. Or of course, we also have our FTC uh, channels as well too. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, pretty much anywhere else you want to find us out there. Uh, so we do have other shows coming up uh, this week. Tomorrow, we actually have uh, Rev Robotics will be on doing a quick build of one of their drive-based platforms for FTCs. If you're interested in that, check that out at 8 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday if you're watching this live. Uh, next week, lots of stuff going on. We actually have two different Catathon uh, build presentations, one on Monday with the Blue League and then another one on Friday. Of course, we'll be back next week with FRC Recap Weekly next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And then uh, other competitions, we even have a Rocket League tournament happening two Saturdays from now. You can find out more about our Discord for that as well. So on behalf of myself, Tegan, and Aaron, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Fun. Talk to you then. Thanks, guys.